idea that everyone is equal before the law and I think sometimes that's been misconstrued and even in English law into a kind of everyone gets treated equally by the law right which is this sort of situation where like I don't know um, if a, you know it's this idea of a rich man everybody for example uh, no matter what their means or their or their responsibility in society pays the same fine for the same crime that's English law okay so yeah. you, you um you're a judge and you get a speeding ticket, it's 40, you get a parking ticket, it's 40 quid, right? So most of them don't even turn up except for the judge. Yeah, so, so their, their, their yeah. parking ticket's 40 quid, but I mean, if, you're, if you're a poor man and you get a parking ticket and 40 quid is a, is a lot of money, knock you, out of it, yeah. you also get a parking ticket of 40 quid, you know? Uh, the Irish law is quite different. The Breton law is like, um, uh, included, um, ha, uh, your status was a big part of how the punishment worked, so it was staggered, if you know what I mean. You had an honour price, which was attached to your status in society. So uh, in that case, a judge who got a parking ticket would have also an honour, he would have to pay on top of the standard parking ticket, he'd have to pay uh, an honour price on top of it, which was equal, which was a high one if he's high status. So basically, and like low, say, a judge yeah. would have a, a, a 500 euro parking ticket. So the rich person goes <laughs> in and the poor person goes in for the same crime, right? Yeah. So hypothetically, the poor guy gets fined 10 pounds yeah. out of 100. Mm. The other guy gets fined one thousand yeah. or out of yeah. or say one hundred out of one thousand. Mm. So he gets charged more because he's got more. Yes. And his responsibility is held to be more as well, you see. So and you know it's an equal it's regarded as an equal uh, as an equalizing thing. The law is, is the concept of the law is that it equalizes uh, everything. If you know what I mean. Yeah, no, believe me, that's another way of thinking about that, I suppose it's, it's much the same. It's a bit like equal opportunities. So automatically it's assumed everybody is equal for this opportunity. Yeah, so I mean the fine for him, for the judge, is equal is equal to the poor man's. Yeah. It's just that it's more in absolute terms, you know what I mean? I mean it, it's so it can't be an equal opportunity if two people are coming from two different backgrounds. If one it, guy is coming so, from a well off, brought up, educated background, the other guy's coming from poverty. Yeah. It's not equal. So exactly. So the concept in Irish law says that it says that in the Shanachus, the very beginning of the Shanachus Moore, which is the fifth century um, text which introduces the Irish law, uh, Brian law. It says, it says that the world was in chaos before the coming of the Shanachus because everybody was being treated as if they were equal. Okay, <laughs> which is this is funny because English law kind of has that concept enshrined right yeah and that everyone thinks that's a great concept irish law has a has the opposite concept it says nobody is equal right? <laughs> everybody is unequal if you know what i mean like some are more ability than others some have more wealth than others some are more honest than others right but it says that the duty of the law is to make what isn't equal and that goes back then also what you're saying about people being rewarded for the good to do yeah so the idea of the law is to make what isn't equal yeah equal and the law is what does that. The law makes judgments that create what's... You, know, you think about this, right? Say if you had that system set up in Ireland at the present moment, right? Yeah. Can you imagine all the money that would be taken in in revenue for fines from a billionaire? Yes, huge money would come in. Yeah, yeah. Um, if, if any, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, because they describe it this way. They say that, they're, they just, they say that what happens before the... And again, they say that the reason there was chaos before the shank is everyone was being treated equally, which is similar to what we have now, where where people, where the where um, exactly like we're saying, a rich man can afford to like like I heard of a case of you know a barrister who parks his car um, anywhere he wants to because the the because the parking ticket is worth it. It's 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 only small change to him. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, that's you, yeah. So the principle of it doesn't matter to him. You know what I mean? He has it sixty seconds later. John. Yeah, yeah. So he's happy enough to pay it, and you know it's not a big deal or to anybody or whatever, but. Oh, but you couldn't do that under the Brehan law because he'd have been getting he'd kept he'd get hit he'd uh, feel the fine he'd feel the fine yeah because um and uh so the way the Irish law put it what the way the Brehan law described that was it said that it calls it in Irish uh, um it, it tries to do it so that what they call good to good and bad to bad if you know what I mean in other words uh it's trying to transfer money money would be our modern equivalent you know sometimes goods in the old days but it would be the idea is that fines, as you say, would transfer, um, uh, in other words, money would transfer to good behaviour. Money or resources would transfer to good behaviour and money would be taken away from bad behaviour, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, uh, and, and it's based on your, on your 
honor so price, right? So the higher you are in society, the higher your honor price, which it means... It seems like a good incentive uh, to be good or try to be good. Well, that's how... Yeah, exactly. So it's incentivizing people to act in the right way as well as, as well as punishing them for acting the wrong way. But it also protects people at a high level because if you're a, if you're a very high level person, like a judge again, uh, or something like that, I don't know, whatever we say oh. is a high level person. I don't know why I'm saying ju- you know, judge, but that'll do. Yeah. Um, he has a high honour price. So if he commits that park and fine, he has to pay an honour price as well, right? So that's high. So he has a higher fine than than your average person, right? But it works the other way around too. If like if, if someone if someone commits a crime against him, like say an assault or something, they have not just the assault price, if you know what I mean, but they have to pay his honour price, if you know what I mean. Explain a, a crime against him. Oh, you know crime I mean? against them. Did you pay him an honour fine? They have to pay, but it's value. On, it's value is based on his one. Oh yeah, you see what I mean. So it's very high, right? I got you. Which means that a poor person is distance. You know, they don't have an incentive to go near someone very high status. In other words, mugging the judge would be a bit much because be when if you get awesome. caught, yeah, the honour, the price would be massive. It would be more than what you can so afford. So say the person that was found to be wrong or first person, mm. person found to be guilty. Yeah. What happened thereafter? Or do you, did that conviction go with them for the rest of their life job or yeah well it depends on what kind of thing it is like um I say petty stuff petty stuff you had about well you have you have three strikes and then your honor price drops right you know as your as your status drops basically so you'd have like mostly three strikes as far as i understand you'd have like three uh, goals wow and then you actually get your honor price stripped so actually the weird thing about irish fi- irish system is that your fines go down the more crimes you commit. Because right? <laughs> obviously your status and your, your status is dropping. Yeah, all the status, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're, you know what I mean? They don't go up, they go down. But that's, you, you're getting worse. You're, you're actually dropping. You would also be kind of losing your job, if you know what I mean, like because your status is going down. I suppose we could, we could yeah. romanticise about it and think, oh, that's a lovely system and everything's so pleasant, but I, I wouldn't imagine it was that simple. Um, uh, no, um, well, it's not great for everybody, but it is a very the fair... The poor man would antagonise the rich man, would he not? Hoping to get assaulted and get that extra. That could happen because um, if a yeah if a person of a higher honor price like sort of did some crime against a poor person, it's the high honor price that transfers to the poor person. So, do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you, yeah. But uh, in those sort of tight local systems, there wasn't a whole lot of room for getting away with that kind of thing. If you know what I mean, it's because right. everybody would know who was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, it's but it's uh, no. You could you could say that, but there is evidence for. Um, so there was a problem that those I described towns like the Pale and like Kilkenny and those English towns, English cultural towns. They were ang- we we called them Anglo Irish because they were by that you know as the centuries wore on, they were kind of a mixed bag of. They were, they were under English government and English jurisdiction, but yeah. they were like a mixed culture, you know. Um, but it was very diverse, that's, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So you got yeah. You had even in the south, you had like places under um you know different kinds of french portuguese spanish all kinds of people trading on the west coast you know what i mean that kind of stuff but um my point here though is that when they brought in a lot of laws in the middle ages poinings laws i think or there were other various kind of laws uh, prohibiting people in the pale and prohibiting people in kilkenny and that going to irish courts <laughs> but who they're really targeted against is against their own settlers against english people uh, uh english uh, settlers or uh, English merchants in the towns who kept going out of the towns to go to Irish courts because they regarded them as fairer oh, is what I'm trying to get gotcha. at. Yeah. So a lot of the struggle that the English crown had in the country was trying to stop in their own people going to Irish courts because they preferred them as well. So if that <laughs> was... If that it shows was you a, that they were fair. If there was an option, right, just in modern day, say a Sligo court, right? Yeah. And you're about to walk up the steps of the court and the guy comes out and says, hey, you know something? There's a Brehan law courthouse just around the corner yeah how many people will go there yeah well i think a lot of people would in 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 many cases because it's not it's not an adversarial system either it's a different system isn't it one really does punish you and keeps punishing you then a woman find you and you know almost give you hey that's strike one now remember that yeah well exactly i mean that that idea of like trying to give you a chance to sort of have reward and good behaviour. I mean, for example, it, the way it balanced it out, I remember there was an example of like, say you find an object, say you find a handbag somewhere. The Irish law, um, like if you find one now under with the English system it, and you hand one in, that's just because you're good. It's up to the person that it gets it back whether they give you a reward or not, okay? Now they might do, they might not, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the state itself and the 
police and nobody you know you just thanks or pat the head or whatever <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> or you're a fool there's no incentive for you to really do it but under the Irish system if you hand if you found an object a valuable object like that and you handed it in now uh, the there, it was automatically calculated that there was a reward for this but the but the calculation was based on where you'd found it <laughs> and whether or not people saw you finding it so if people saw you find, find it oh gotcha because you could if there was be accused you stole it to yeah, so if, or whatever. yeah yeah so say you found it like in a remote place I think I, I, I might have this a little bit wrong but you get the idea I yeah I do yeah I do. Um, if you found it like in a remote place and nobody saw you found it and there was no reason for you to hand it in you could have just kept it uh, you got like um, I don't know say like three quarters of the value or something wow. because you, you know you'd been very honest and it was entirely your own honesty it sounded like if, a, a if you found it in a kind of complicated place complicated system yeah so if you found it in a place where a lot of people saw you found it there was witnesses you know what I mean and um, and uh, it was in a kind of obvious kind of a place and whatever do you know what I mean like that where someone would figure it out and you weren't all you weren't as on it you know what I mean you were kind of under pressure to hand it over now, we, we, you'd get like a third of the price do you know what I mean you would get less of a and reward there could be an assumption we made there or something because how people did uh, what they did back then how they did it right and how they behaved and the incentives all of that seemed to have worked for them times now we could say it never worked now but the only reason it would never work now is because we've been uh, sedated uh, almost to a point of uh, British ideology and systems and traits and fashions and all that kind of stuff. So of course our thinking now wouldn't it be would be different as opposed to that system. We, we yeah, it's hard to do. it's yeah that's it. A, we're <laughs> thinking about it in past tense, right? Yeah, and yeah. But we're also thinking the modern time of almost complete colonization, you want to call it. Um, it's kind of difficult to get out of that cloud. Yeah, so, I mean, if we're right about what we're talking about, though, it yeah. means that the more, you know, like, say, for example, in your in your own community, uh, one of the problems you're having, like when you describe, um, you know, having that dis disconnection in schools or this history isn't mine or this doesn't work in my head or whatever, you know what I mean? And, it never uh, played is, out, yeah. To some, it should be, in theory, it's based it's based on, on this problem. If you're, you know what I mean, if you're, if you're coming from the old Irish system, which is so different system, even if now it's not formalized, it's just uh, it's just handed down in some way. You know that way of thinking about what you think is fair, and how you think things should work. And see, my my feeling you on know? it, my my thoughts on it are <coughs> that mentality that we had to adapt. We're because we're speaking that language now, obviously. So therefore, uh, we've been pretty much colonized ourselves in parts and ways, but. Speaking that language uh, for a very long period of time, and which people were. Uh, I was going to say to you was there was a, it seemed to be that mentality was adapted in the sixteen seventeen hundreds or even before that the whole English language. Yeah. Uh, where I felt the settled community had a straight run of it. Hmm. In terms, they went into it early. They stayed in it. They continued with it. We we're pretty much out on the margins of it. We could connect, but we were still disconnected. Because we had kind of a history of our own world, our own culture that didn't match up with this one, so the Irish people who had that run, that long run of it, couldn't recognise us. They couldn't recognise us as, as their own people, mm. but uh, they recognise us in the same way as the British recognise us. So my point is that the Irish mentality came very Britishized in our eyes. Yeah, well that's true, um, because it's more subtle than people think when 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 the Elizabethan thing is. It wasn't just English people coming off a boat. Now there was English armies and there was things like that, but it wasn't just a bunch of English people coming off a boat. Part of what happened in the 60, in the 17th century and that was the ones that benefited most from the uh, confiscation of land and all of that was not just English people. It was it was um, the Anglo-Irish again in the merchants' classes in the towns. It was like a kind of... We could we could frame it in terms of your, what you talked earlier, uh, so, so, sort of a socialism or a tribal communalism, you know, uh, communal or socialist way of organising the yeah. land. Uh, and and what the towns had been like the towns had a um, the towns were the reverse of the Irish system they had the the English and continental system that we we're more familiar with uh, merchants were very high status and and they had money so they were high status you know 
and um, they were important and they sat on the council in the town and do you know what I mean? And, and this that's, is the other thing I was going That's what we're familiar with. Yeah, I'm going to be there for one second. I'll tell you why, because um, my grand uncle was talking about this on the YouTube video I recorded a while back and he said one of the things he got wrong he was a bit angry about it, I think. Well, I felt he was anyway, is that we got named tinkers mm. as one occupation, one trade. And what the truth was and the reality was that that was not true at all. Because it was a multitude of different traits within our community. There was horse dealers. There was uh, people that dealed in wool. There was uh, various other things like that that they could do. Mm. But we got named as tinkers. So, sorry, well, anyway.